Hello, this is R-I-C-K-Y, the YouTube Tech Guy. Hey guys, welcome to another episode of Mobile Weekly slash Mobile Q&A. We go over all latest news that happened during the week and answer your questions live. Now, if you have a question you want to ask, ask it right now live in the comment section down below, and I will answer it before the end of the show. Now, uh, this is a special episode. If you guys saw my video on Sunday, I was not able to film as I was not home. Finally back home, now I can actually uh, get back to the rhythm of everything, and man has a lot happened. So first and foremost, let's get to the news that happened during this week, and the three big topics are all on the S9, but we do have some other topics uh, that are also very interesting. So let's get uh, first on the Galaxy S9. So first of all, the retail box has leaked. This tends to happen towards the time of launch. And right now we're about one month away from the announcement. So it's getting to be about that time. Uh, overall, the big thing about this leak and this box is going to be that the aperture looks like it will go up to f 1.5 which is insane because that is the aperture we saw on their other camera which was the one that's overseas which is the w2 uh 2018 and that one is the best camera out right now even though none of us really have it yet, none of us can test it because it's only been seen on shore uh um uh show floor but really interesting to say the least that this is going to have that same kind of camera so that's what brings so much credence to it is the fact that it looks like yes it's going to match what we are getting um eight megapixel selfie stereo speakers guys stereo speakers let me say that again stereo speakers that is a big big deal the question is is where are they going to be placed are they going to be placed in the front are we going to get some front firing speakers are they going to be stereo speakers on the bottom of a phone uh how are they going to be overall i think think if we're being just you know like the evolution of samsung it probably is just going to be two uh down firing ones uh and that's about it uh but i'm hoping i am hoping we get something more akin to the google pixel xl and we have the front firing stereo speakers right there we'll see i'm very curious to see how it turns out now you also have uh, earphones tuned by AKG and it does not say here, here's the big thing too, it does not necessarily say here that we have a headphone jack, right? We have earphones tuned, but that could be a type C headphones or regular headphones. We don't know really. So that's a big thing on it. Uh, 64 gigs of storage, which we expect now, and four gigs of RAM on the S9 version. The S9 Plus is supposed to come with six gigs of RAM. So there will be a differentiation between the RAM and these two devices, whether you get the smaller one or the bigger one. Uh, and also super slow-mo. We can expect this to be a super uh, high slow-mo, just like Sony has in their Xperia phones and how Apple has on theirs, whether it will be as good as the iPhone or as good as the Xperia. The Xperia is the best slow motion currently available. We'll see if uh, this one will get that far or if it'll just match the iPhone. I have a feeling it's gonna match the iPhone. I don't know if we're gonna get a thousand uh, you know, FPS, but that'll be interesting. That being said, that was the retail box. Now we also have some other things none other from evan blast and he said a c-level case maker worker so or sorry case maker executive um has said that the s9 will follow this path the launch which isn't i hate that they call it a launch because that's misleading it's not the release which is what you think of when you think of a launch it's the announcement date the announcement date is 226 pre-orders are 3-1 and uh, shipping and release is 316. That's just hilarious that it's 316 because of, you know, what we always talk about on this channel, 116, as the time is always 116. But really kind of interesting to see that is uh, what he thinks. 
also kind of interesting to think of uh, the third phone in this launch is missing. But they don't have a case for that one, so that's why. Uh, so next thing uh, we are getting is also the battery capacity. So battery capacity, we had heard, we estimated it would be actually 3,200 on the S9. So because of that, we thought, oh, okay, both batteries are gonna bump up. Actually, now this certification tells us otherwise. This certification actually tells us that the S9 will maintain the 3,000 milliamp battery that the S8 had. Now there should be improvements because of processor, because of all of these improvements made to Android, there should be a better battery life. However, will it actually go that route? No. Hold on one second. We have a spammer on here. So of course we have to uh, block them. There we go. Sorry about that. Um, so that's gonna be a big thing as it's gonna be the same battery size, but we should have a longer battery life but it's only gonna be a slight bump up in battery as you can imagine uh, because of that. So just keep that in mind. Now here's something that I have to be quite careful with how I talk about it. Samsung brought an almost finished foldable Galaxy X to CES. You know CES, that place that a lot of YouTubers were but not everyone got to be in certain areas. With a 7.3 inch display in tow. Now, if we go by the image that we are seeing, it very much looks like the Galaxy X is in its final stages. It, it, it looks like it, it could quite be ready um, as, it, as if it was a spring chicken, as it were, uh, to finally uh, go out into the world. Now, is it is it going to launch what everyone believes currently right now at the same time as the Note? Or will it launch earlier? We can't say. So, uh, the big thing, important thing is, is again, we're getting more finalized looks at how the Galaxy X could possibly look like and we're getting down to uh, when we could possibly see it. Now, Samsung has traditionally had two announcements in the year, a S series announcement and a Note series announcement. Will they make a third announcement or will they just bundle it up with a Note announcement or with an S announcement? That's the curiosity. Uh, Although you have to imagine anyone that saw this at the event would definitely have signed things saying that, you know, they couldn't uh, announce anything of such sorts. So let's move on to the next thing. And that is Sony it could possibly be uh, having the MWC announcement for a flagship phone. So at CES, we did check out three phones from them and they had some really cool mid-range and even entry-level smartphones, which one I'm really curious to test out. We're gonna reach out to Sony and hopefully we will get to review them. Uh, but here's the thing, they might have a flagship, which is kind of interesting. I really am curious because it looks like with the new Xperia lineup, they aren't shutting off from the US. They regrouped, they're revamping, and I really wanna see what they have to bring to the US in terms of a high-end model. And what will they really release to compete with the flagships of today? And finally, uh, the last one is a really interesting topic, uh, more so because you guys were asking me a couple weeks ago about electric cars and do I really think they're gonna succeed? Or do things like Tesla, are they just, you know, uh, I think someone said like, I think feel like it's like a pyramid scheme. Well, here's the thing. Here's the thing when I was telling you guys like that oil companies are so like far behind in like trying to stop these things from happening because if i were them if i was in charge of any oil company i would be just trying to stop electric cars and they keep gaining headway and in california they have actually already said that they will ban new fossil fuel vehicles uh from being basically sold uh in california by 2040. Now, although this is a long time, you're talking 22 years, 
but that's it. Like the, the, there is, okay, there is a limit of like, oh, this is it. Like this is when the time is up. So I thought that was a really interesting article. Check it out on uh, Engadget for that. But it was a really interesting article. Like, oh, we're getting there. Like that's how crazy it's getting that again, no new fossil fuel vehicles will be allowed uh, in 2040. Now, again, how, how far this ban will go and will it be rewritten? It has 22 years to be rewritten. So it's going to be very interesting, but that's just kind of how much things are progressing. All right. Now, before I get to, uh, all of your guys' questions, again, if you are just tuning in alive right now, make sure to ask your questions in the comment section down below, and I will answer them before the end of the show. But before we get into that, there is another big, uh, story but I really do want to do a separate video on that entirely, and that is LG will not be launching the LG G7, possibly indefinitely, and definitely not at MWC. Uh, this is big news because it's one of the big players out there on flagship smartphones, and uh, we will talk about that more on their new Iconic series and everything that they plan on doing, and why I believe it's definitely a good thing, but it really deserves its own separate video because that is a huge shift in how we're uh, consuming uh, material right now. So that will leave for another video, but I did want to at least mention that and that will be out in a future video, possibly tomorrow. Although I have the the Razer review and the current and the Samsung laptop review to come out. So uh, those are two that uh, are, we'll shuffle, we'll shuffle around and see which one goes up first. Okay. Um, are you mixed reality VR headset? Uh, oh, are you going to do a mixed reality headset for VR for Samsung Odyssey? So funny thing about that is a friend of mine just asked me what I thought about it, uh, just the other day. And again, if for those of you who remember, I actually did pre-order that one, but it was delayed. And that was during the holiday time where, you know, I really wanted to review as many products as possible. So I returned the pre-order, got my money back and put it towards a new product, which was, I think at the time it was a Pixel XL uh, 2 or the Razer phone or the iPhone. It was one of those uh, that money got put towards. So money well spent, I would say for exchange. But yeah, I, I think I might do that, uh, especially because January is a very slow month in, uh, um, in terms of YouTube. So I, I will see about that, if not possibly early February. But I think I will check out a mixed reality headset before the end of February, before the S9 comes out. Um, finally, stereo speakers. Yeah, I know. I think everyone has been waiting for that one. You guys have known me. Everyone who always says like, oh man, he's like a Samsung fanboy and all this kind of stuff. It's like, oh, you know me. I criticize their speakers every single time. I'm like, I always say they're garbage. They're the worst thing on the phone by far. And so, yeah, if that finally goes great, awesome. Uh, due to recent snowfall, I haven't been, uh, transformed to a quiet blizzard. Oh, due to recent snowfall, I've been transformed to a quiet blizzard. Oh, <laughs> okay. It's everyone. <laughs> nice seeing you quiet storm. Um, is it my imagination or is CS starting to look more like a car show? It's funny you say that actually. So there are three main halls at CES and then there's a, a third, a, um, a fourth exhibit really at the Venetian, which is called the Sands Expo. And that's where smaller companies typically are. Uh, but at the main part, the convention center, Las Vegas convention center, there is the South hall, the central hall and the North hall. So the North hall used to be all, uh, smartphone accessories as well as, uh, having the ability to have, um, what was it? Um, cars. So there was, it was split into two, half and half. Uh, this year it did get so big that yes, uh, cars took over the entire, uh, North hall. I want to say it was, yeah, is, yeah. I think it's North hall, the one that they took over and then central hall is all the biggest companies. This is where your Samsung, your LG, your Sony, your Qualcomm, your Intel, all of those companies are. Uh, and then you have the, uh, South hall, which are accessory manufacturers, headphone manufacturers, all of those, and some like gaming manufacturers, VR manufacturers, drone manufacturers, all of those are in there. So that's how they're divided up. Um, overall it is interesting because autonomy in cars is becoming so big. 
that a company like Nvidia, which I would consider more of a gaming company, graphics card company, was actually only in the automotive section uh, this year because they do a lot when it comes to uh, the motherboards that are being in graph and GPUs that are being used in a lot of these autonomous vehicles. So you're starting to see even companies that are known for something else really switch towards that at CES. So yes, I would say the car presence is growing bigger and bigger as autonomous vehicles get more and more. You know, there was so many level four autonomous vehicles. Level four is basically when you still have to have a steering wheel in front of a person, uh, but basically, you know, you don't have to touch it and it drives itself. Level five is when there is no steering wheel. So in terms of uh, we're getting higher and higher to more level four autonomous uh, vehicles that they're showing off at CES. And of course, level five is basically like, we're so, you know, incredibly perfected that you don't even need a steering wheel. That I still feel is uh, more ways off, but it's interesting. Um, Ricky, what are your thoughts on the new Samsung wall TV? If I had, you know, like $200,000, drop it, yeah. Uh, but yeah, no, I mean, you have to figure that wall TV at its 100 and, was it 147 inch, I think? Uh, it's a modular wall. So the really cool thing about it is, uh, for me, not the how big the TV is. It's more the two technologies behind it. One is micro LED, which looks to be better than OLED. And I had talked about this a couple months back. I had told you guys, I did not think we were there yet. And again, it's a concept, right? At this point, it's not a reality. This wall TV does not exist. In March, they're going to have the official announcement for it. And then it could come out in like September or December. You know, it, it's, it's, it's official announcement. Right now, it's, the concept was announced. Then the announcement for the TV itself will be announced. And then it will actually come out. So could that be this year? I do believe it will be this year, but I, I, I honestly think it'll be Q4 of this year. Um, however, the again, the more interesting thing is, is one of micro LED, this technology is superior to OLED. Uh, the reason being it has no burn in issue as OLED would have, and it's also brighter than OLED. Now, are we going to see it on any kind of phones anytime soon? Probably not. The cost is very expensive, uh, but it's just, again, we're, we're getting to inch more interesting points of technology where right now OLED is the golden standard. It's become the golden standard. We're up to the point where every smartphone now is an OLED display instead of a regular LCD now. But in five years from now, you're going to get to where the point of micro LED is going to be taking over. Uh, so that's going to be, that's one exciting thing to see about the wall TV. The second thing is it's a modular design, meaning you can actually custom fit it to whatever you want. So if you literally had a wall and say my wall, you know, was a 16 by, I wanted a 16 by nine TV and my wall was, you know, a hundred feet going this way and 40 or, um, uh, or sorry, um, yeah, yeah, so 100 feet going that way and like 40 feet going up. I They could actually create a TV just for that specific size. Now, will that be extremely expensive? Yes, of course it would be. But just to give you an idea, that's that's what's so crazy about this is that how much you can get. Uh, and again, when Samsung had like, I think 108 inch TV, that was over $100,000 on their website. So you better believe 147 inch micro LED is gonna probably be 200,000, I would say is a good estimate for the price, maybe 150. Uh, but it's, it's gonna be a lot of money that again, will not be bought by most people. Uh, but yeah, I mean, can you imagine having that, like all these rich people, right, that have like $5 million homes. Well, sorry, in Los Angeles, it's like a $5 million home. In different parts of the world, it could, or different parts of the US, it could be like a million dollar home, you know. If you have a room big enough to have like a home theater, like a legit home theater set up, right? Your speakers, your screen, your couches, all that kind of stuff, like laid out like a theater. Right now, you have projectors. With this, you don't have to have a projector. You could have like, a legit beautiful wall of a TV that looks way better than any projector could. Now that's impressive, right? So that that is my thoughts on, the, is it for the rich? Absolutely. Uh, but more so the technologies behind it is what's so interesting and what I think will be so great in the future. Um, 
Whoa, a whole bunch of questions just loaded. Uh, I knew it was gonna do that to me too, and I was like trying to see, wait, where am I? Ah. Uh, uh, to you, which phone is better, the iPhone X or the S8? Ooh, that's kind of interesting. Um, Cause like if you were to ask me between the Note 8 and the iPhone X, I would easily say the Note 8. For me, it's just better in every way, better battery life, better screen, uh, better camera overall, uh, not better video quality, that's the iPhone, but most of your better is there. Now, in terms of everything else, that's, it depends, right? It really depends on what the user's preference is. But for me, I like the interface of a Samsung better. But again, for me, an S8 is too small. Like I don't like that, that size of, I want a bigger screen phone. I know it's 5.8, but that's a smaller phone to me. Like I would, I have stated that the iPhone 8 Plus to me is a better phone than the iPhone X. The only reason I have an iPhone X is because when the S9 comes out, the iPhone X would get more views than an iPhone 8 Plus would. That's why I have it. Or else, absolutely, I would get an iPhone 8 Plus instead of this, because to me, this isn't worth the price. Um, uh, let's see. What's a good phone to buy with a good camera, AMOLED screen, under $300? I don't care if it's used. Um... I don't think you can get an S7 for that price. <sighs> the problem is, is an OLED screen for that price, or an AMOLED screen rather. Um, I don't think, I don't believe, I'm trying to remember if this is an OLED or not now. Nope, that's an LCD. Because I was gonna say, flipping through my phones here, uh, the Honor 7X is $200, has a good camera, uh, good, again, uh, really good camera, and uh, is a really great screen, but it is not OLED, so it's an LCD. That That's probably the best one for 200 right now. Um, I don't think that new Sony, Xperia is an OLED. Let's see, what was that, the L2? That one is 250. Uh, hardware, camera, 720p display, 5.5 inch. No, I think that's just a regular LCD. Just see it though, to make sure it's an LCD. Um, yeah, I, I, off the top of my head, it's hard to think of an OLED one at that price point, and that's the main thing. Cause, actually, I think the Moto X4, but I think that's a little bit more. This one right here, actually, I believe might be an OLED. Um, that's the problem when you review too many phones, you really forget like, did this have that? Did this have that? I always forget. Um, I just want your specs. Or it's a problem with always doing these live, guys. I want to answer your questions. Want to make sure I do. If you take the time to ask it, but it's hard sometimes to see. Nope, that's an LCD too. Um, unfortunately, I cannot think of an OLED at that price. Like an S6, you can get an S6 now for sure, around that price. Uh, maybe even a OnePlus 3 or a OnePlus 3T, uh, you can get for around 300 now, but those would be the ones that come to mind at least. Um, 316 Illuminati confirmed. <laughs> 
Uh, too bad it's not 117. I know I should have done the video yesterday at 116, but yesterday was a hell of a day and I definitely could not do a video, unfortunately. Um, yeah, I have an SA Plus and love it. Um, Uh, Samsung mentioned the Gear 4 at CES. Did they show it? Uh, no, no. Uh, again, it will most likely be released uh, with at MWC. When should the price go down on the S8 Plus? Uh, the price should go down in February, usually before launch. You already have a deal on it, right? I think they're giving away free headphones, uh, AKG headphones, if you buy an S8 right now. Dougie me mix. Um, I don't think that's how you spell it. Um, all these ben, uh, bendy phones look like, honestly, uh, the, the image might look bad. Um, when is the Samsung, uh, Notebook Pro 9 coming out? Do you mean the review? The review should be coming out this week. I know I've said that for a while, but it should be coming out this week. Um, in terms of the, uh, in terms of the new one, their new one's actually not called the Pro. It's called the Samsung Notebook S Pen, I think now. Uh, and that one, uh, does not have a confirmed launch date yet. Uh, when will Samsung announce Gear S4? Again, that'll come out with the next one. Any prices on the Samsung uh, Notebook 9 Pen? No, they did not announce any uh, any of those. Uh, Sony Projector TV at CES uh, 2018. Thanks, Ricky. Oh yeah, that was a really uh, that was a really awesome demo they did. I would love one of those. Like, see, if I were again like really wealthy and like could have like a home theater. That is easily the projector I would have. And again, we were just talking about, right, 147 inch TV uh, from Samsung, but you're talking like 200,000. That makes the 30,000 projector from Sony not look too expensive, right? Comparing that to it, especially when that's 120 inch and it looked phenomenal. Like I was like, yeah, this looks like better than half the TVs here at CES. This is way better. So for it to be 120 inch, it's really great and the sound coming out of that thing like you didn't need a sound system that that was better than most sound systems that i heard at ces it was it was awesome so i really loved it and yeah i mean it was an amazing demo check out that video if you haven't it, it's really an awesome demo uh do you any do you anything about the fingerprint reader on the note 8 becoming loose uh no i haven't had at least mine have any issues so no not nothing on my phone when is the Note 9 uh, being released? The Note 9, they might release it a little bit earlier this year. You know, normally they've been releasing it in August, but it has been announced in July before. Uh, micro LED, micro LED is a new technology. Uh, I talked about it, God, it was months ago. I, I, I had alluded to it more, so I was like, you know, in a few years I'll work on micro LED, because I didn't think we'd see it this soon, to be honest, uh, but yeah, it's already being worked on, uh, and I think it was the pressure from Samsung to come out with something better than OLED, and now they have the concept of it, but obviously it's not going to be any uh, consumer uh, mostly owned devices by the end of this year, you know, it's going to only be on one TV, so... But yeah, as if we get like, you know, a, just a regular LED, a micro LED TV next year, that would be impressive. Is the time okay right now? I totally understand if this is going to be a bit shorter. Uh, uh, no, yeah, we should be, oh, a whole bunch of questions just loaded. Uh, yeah, we should be fine till, uh, 9 p.m. Um... 1.5 camera with the variable f-stop is interesting. It really is. I, I cannot wait to test it out, to be honest. 
If you know when the Samsung X is coming, I'll tug your left ear, love. Look, I do not know about Samsung X, a Galaxy X. I do not know anything about that. Um, kind of itch. Um, <laughs> uh, do do you think it's worth an upgrade if you have a Galaxy S A Plus? Or to get a Galaxy, if you have a Galaxy S8 Plus, to get a Galaxy S9 Plus. So here's the thing about that, right? You're going to have a better battery. You're going to have a faster operating system. You're going to have um, a better camera, definitely. And you're going to have better sound quality with stereo speakers. Is that worth it for an upgrade? Can't really say yet until I get it in my hands. Uh, but to me, yeah, that would probably be worth an upgrade. Uh, will the Note 9 have 8 gigs of RAM internal uh, or will it have 6 gigs? Too early to tell. I can tell you Samsung probably has both versions right now in the works and we'll decide which one probably around June. Um, if you want the dual cameras on the S9, uh, so no, actually, so the S, yeah, the S9 Plus will most likely have the dual cameras. The regular S9 will not, uh, so that is a difference. Bluetooth uh, 5.0 devices at CES? No. Again, it was my number five prediction at CES for a reason, just because I was like, I hoped we had something, but no, nothing. Uh, no, I think Bluetooth 5.0 devices now probably won't come out till the second half of the year because no one had anything on it, which is honestly depressing, but there you go. Uh, on the subject of cars, what are your thoughts on a plug-in uh, hybrid mixes, especially with the advantages of self-driving and get long range economy? Um, I really like them, to be honest. I, I mean, I, I have a hybrid right now. I have a regular hybrid, though, not a plug-in uh, or mix hybrid. I, I have a regular standard hybrid, uh, the originals, basically. Uh, so I have a Hyundai Sonata hybrid, uh, serves me well. I love it, the fact that I went to Vegas and back and I, literally it wasn't until I got back that I need to get gas. So that's great to me uh, that I drove all the way to Vegas from Los Angeles, did all of my driving, got back, and that's when I need to get gas. So that to me is awesome and I love the gas efficiency of a hybrid. Uh, but yeah, I like the idea of something like a Volt, right? A Chevy Volt that you can plug in and you still have a gas tank. Um, overall, if, if I'm like driving up and down California, there are so many plug-in stations, I don't need to worry about gas as much. But yeah, if I'm going cross country, if I'm going from here to Florida, here to New York, I would feel a lot more comfortable with a hybrid gas mix, plug-in mix. Uh, that would be m more comfortable for me. Uh, but yeah, so th th that's what I would say. I would say it depends how much you travel. If you're in a city like Los Angeles, uh, San Francisco, New York, Chicago, uh, Miami, uh, Dallas, um, these places that have a lot of plug-in stations, I would say you probably need to worry a little bit less, but it depends on where you live and what's and how much your city supports plug-in to see if it's worth it for you. Uh, Surface or MacBook? That depends on your operating system more. So I know you could put either operating system on either computer, but overall, I would really say it really depends on your on your preferences. To be honest, neither one is truly my favorite though. Like even if, even though I like Windows, like I like my Samsung laptop a lot more. I would like a Dell XPS a lot more, and I would like a um, what was some of the ones? Uh, some of the Lenovo's a lot more than the Surface. I think the Surface has a really good name brand to it, but if you're if you're talking about spec for spec, the Surface honestly gets outclassed by a lot of other uh, computers on getting better bang for your buck. Now you're paying for the brand, you're paying for the style, all that kind of stuff. Hey, that's all you. But that that's my thing is is when it comes to actual substance of what you're getting, I, I think the Dell XPS, uh, Lenovo and uh, even Samsung, depending on which model, like there's some of their new ones, I think it completely outclassed the Surface uh, from what you're getting to the price point. Um, would you choose a Note 9 or a Galaxy X? Having seen neither, I would say I would have to see both. 
because it really is interesting when you would probably end up comparing them. Uh, hi, Rick. Hey, Ricky. Uh, for a chance, uh, you got to see a uh, power spot transmitter from PowerCast at CS. Uh, you think about um, what do you think about it? For me, that is real wireless charging. So uh, I did not get to see it in person, though. I did. I do know about it um, and their technology. Uh, so basically, they use uh, from what I from what I understand, it's infrared uh, is the spectrum that it's using. And so basically, what they do is they have a sender, and a band is a receiver, and the band tells you how far you can get it. Now, again, this was a concept, a proof of concept that you could actually charge something far away. Now they wrap them around specific devices and all that kind of stuff. So theoretically kind of showing you that like your phone could be in the room and it could charge and the closer it is to the uh to the sender to the transmitter is the better the quicker it will charge and the further away it is is the slower that it will charge so it, it's a it's a you know it depends on how it's going to go for it but overall that's the idea behind it um Great reviews on tech in CES 2018. Well, thank you. I appreciate that. Um, whoa. Uh, for the modular design micro LED, how will it work for repairs, especially at wall size um, accidents? Well, so that's really interesting, right? Because it's modular. So theoretically, theoretically, they could literally take it apart and only replace a section of it instead of having to replace the entire wall. How that is done, I did not know. They did not, they were very tight-lipped about a lot of specifics, but it's modular. So the question is, is it modular after being made as well, or is it only modular to create it itself? That's a question that I do not know, and they did not want to talk about that, basically. Um, the Galaxy S7 around $300, uh, seen deals on slick deals. Oh, there you go. So the S7 uh, you can actually get for 300 and that has an OLED screen and uh, a really great camera. So that would be a great phone to get for 300. Uh, check out some deals on slickdeals.com uh, as Alex said, and that would be a great place to find it. Um, I'm actually selling my S7 right now if anyone wants it. Hey, there you go. Look, you have a seller for an, S, uh, for an S7 right now uh is it around 300 bucks there you go um should i get an s9 plus or wait for the note 9. Ooh, um that is a tough one because the note is always what i lean towards like i always end up with a note at the end of the year always but would i get an s9 i mean s9 plus is always a great upgrade it is a great upgrade it just i usually say it depends on how long you want to wait to upgrade your phone if your phone is cracked it's bad shape you need a new phone you might want to get an s9 plus then uh if you can wait and you want the best of the best by the end of the 2018 might be better off waiting for a note 9. what was the belt you had at ces uh so the belt i had was uh my new uh, championship belt. I kind of did a little video on it. If you look back, it was how to get uh, the best custom belts. And uh, it was from the same company that uh, my wife got to make the original belt that we had. And But it's awesome. I have some pictures on Instagram and Twitter for it. So check it out over there. But yeah, really awesome. Loved it. And it was really great. So I rocked that belt everywhere. And it was really cool. Uh, but it was from... Uh, Pro Amp Belts, uh, the link was in that video, but that's where it was from, Pro Amp Belts. I want to say it's how you pronounce it. Uh, um, maybe a Moto again around that price. So LG will be out of business in the next five years. LG would not be out of business in the next five years. That won't happen. However, LG might be out of the mobile business in the next five years if they don't make a profit that is that is honestly possible what do you think about the new dex pad um i would really have to see what it entails 
uh, because there are two different versions we're hearing about a dex pad. One is just a pad, uh, like a wireless charging pad uh, that then you connect to get dex. But what I'm more interested in is like a tablet version of a dex pad. I think that would be a lot cooler and more useful. Uh, the thing that stuck in my mind about CES 2018 was the Razer phone slides into a laptop body. I'm a Samsung fan, but Razer phone has my attention. Actually, there is something like that for Samsung and it uses DeX. It's called the, um, the, uh, mirror book. And we covered it last year at CES. We met up with the guys again this year and they're ready to go into production in uh, March or April. So we told them we want a review unit to really show it off to you guys. So uh, yeah, if you, if you wanna jump on social media uh, anytime, tag me at the YouTube tech guy. And I think it's Mira Book or Mira Mix, I think is the company name maybe. Mira. Here we go. Put it over here for you guys. I hate when Logitech has to update their mouse. My mouse shortcuts don't work. But yeah, this one right here, guys. So it's called the Mirror Book. It turns your smartphone into a laptop. Basically, you plug it in with that. We covered it again last year at CES. Am I right there? Oh no, thought it was me over there. Uh, but I covered it last year with them. Um, it was really great to check the guys out again this year. But yeah, uh, we hope to get it from them. They're uh, originally from France, but really cool in terms of just everything they were showing. This, these are the only events I get to see them at because again, they're from France. So I haven't got to see them since uh, last year and saw them this past year again. And yeah, it was a lot of fun checking out. They actually had a meeting with Razer uh, later on that day. So they were telling me like, oh yeah, uh, who knows what'll happen kind of thing. So yeah, interesting when it comes to that. I think, uh, you know, Razer might've talked to them about their technology and how they figured all these things out. Uh, by the way, even a Nintendo Switch works with it. So that's how cool it is. Uh, it was it was glitchy again, cause it wasn't a final build, but really cool. I think they have an Indiegogo right now too. Um, let's see. Considering you know about Dragon Ball Fighters, how will you avoid being spoiled by things from Dragon Ball Super? Uh, cause there are a few there. Um, so I have the full second season now downloaded. I need to watch it. Uh, but yeah, I, I need to catch up. Um, so much stuff's going on with real estate right now. I'm literally have one closing and one opening. So a lot of stuff's going on with real estate right now and family stuff just got through with all that kind of stuff. So yeah, trying to catch up, but I'm running out of time as Dragon Ball Z Fighters is next week, I believe, and I have to do a gaming review. I, I think next week we have three gaming reviews that I'm gonna start to work on, if I'm not mistaken. I gotta pre-order some of these, I just realized. I was like, oh dang, I still don't have these uh, freaking pre-ordered. Um, let's see, next week I have Dragon Ball Z Fighter, Monster Hunter World, and I think there was one other one, ah, Dissidia, uh, uh, Final Fantasy NT. So I have three, God, that's next Friday, isn't it? Okay, so yeah, I have, I have a lot of work to do uh, before then. And during then, because yes, I do not want to get spoiled by everything. And I know Goku Black is, I think, in the game. Hopefully, if they have a storyline, they don't go into Super, but we'll see. Um, if upgrading your device was not always recommended, how about when they release a security patch? Um, again, it, it's kind of unavoidable if you're not, if you're not honestly like, you have to be a really, really techie person to be able to do a security patch without an update because it's it's not easy. Um, it's not even worth my time, to be honest. Like, I, I just, I'll upgrade the device. Uh, but uh, you do want to always upgrade security patches. It's just, it's something you want to do.
Especially if there's a vulnerability like there was this past November. This past November, uh, the security patch for all smartphones was so that your wi when, you, when you go into Wi-Fi, you would be safe from the exploit that allowed anyone to get into your device via the same Wi-Fi. So that was a big security patch that really needed to be fixed. Hey Ricky, do you recommend to install Oreo on an unlocked S7? No, no, I don't. Um, also, I didn't even finish reading that. That, that was all. Um, also, you know, a good screen protector for the S8 Plus. Um, I like the, um, I think it was a Bodyguards one or Body Gloves? Bodyguards, I think. Um, it's been a long time. I, I do not remember anymore. Uh, but I think it was Body something. I want to say it was Bodyguards. Um, Gears 4 release date, any thoughts on how it may look? Um, haven't, did not get actually too much information on the Gears 4, I will be honest. Uh, that was one information I did not get at some context. Um, uh, um, meet any cool people at CES? No, actually, I mean, I, I met, I met with a lot of connections and contacts uh from companies like company representatives so that's what i would say in terms of cool people but i meant like no youtubers actually out there um i saw some i saw like linus tech tips i saw um didn't say mkbhd that is that mkbhd is honestly a guy i would go up to because i would be like man i love your work and everything like that um I saw some Android Authority people there. I saw some Phone Arena people there. I saw John V pass by. Um, I saw Armando pass by. Uh, but yeah, uh, n no person, like, I mean, it's always a thing too. Like I saw uh, Jonathan, um, I forgot his last name, uh, but he's a high, uh, high YouTuber too. Um, I don't think, I, I don't know if I saw Austin Evans. I can't remember, but I, I saw a lot of these people there, but you never know if you just want to go up to these guys, especially while they're working. Like a lot of times when I see them, I'm doing a video or they're doing a video. So it's like, you know, we're all like going, going, going. Um, and so, yeah, like I, I was going to say hi to Jonathan when he passed by. Uh, I saw him at the Huawei party, uh, but we were literally just leaving and he was coming in. So I was like, it's fine, you know, but like those are the kind of ones that I'm like, man, like I would like to connect with all these high, you know, ranking YouTubers. Uh, just to pick their brain and just talk to them, but yeah. Uh, favorite biggest fail at CES? Uh, honestly, one of the biggest things, if you check out our LG uh, conference, uh, I would say it was the biggest fail and biz biggest success. Um, the robot stopped working. Uh, what is their robot called? Chloe. The LG robot Chloe stopped working after like three or four questions. And the presenter handled it like a pro. Like he played it off. He he tried several times later. Chloe was basically not working. It was a done deal. But he did such a good job at recovery that it was awesome. Uh, and of course, uh, if you heard, uh, the lights went off at CES. So that was just an epic fail all around. Uh, you have the biggest electronic convention in the world and all the lights go off and all the electricity goes out. I thought it was hilarious. Um, HomePod coming soon. Not soon enough, I would say. But yeah, it is coming soon. It's coming this year. <laughs> um, do you know what the price would be for the S9 and S9 Plus? I have been told it's, you can probably expect the same as the current price uh, for the S8 and S8 Plus when they came out. Um, any tips on the Google Home? I'd like uh, to turn lights on uh, with my voice uh, like a Jedi. Um, so yeah, there there are, I still have a 10 best features of Google Home uh, Mini coming out, which will work on a Google Home. But again, it's 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 really time is, is something I have very little of right now, guys. Um, what is the best launcher for the Note 8? Uh, I would say Nova Launcher, it's my favorite launcher. And you can see my video, I did a recent video on Nova and why I thought it was so great and best uh, favorite apps video on the Note 8 too. Uh, check out both of those. Uh, do you think the S9 or S9 Plus is better than the iPhone X? Or if not, which phone hands down do you think? It just depends, I mean really, it's like, um, in terms of, 
I mean, it's amazing how glitchy the iPhone, uh, the latest OS of iPhone has been. Um, iOS 11 has been really glitchy since it came out. So that's had a lot of issues with the iPhone X in general, the whole eye thing that uh, was an issue. It just had so many little glitches on upon release. But yeah, uh, it, it's just had a lot of glitches overall, really. Um, uh, dar the dark or the light side? Uh, for me, it would be the light side. Um, has any carrier pushed uh, Nougat out to the S8? Um, you mean Oreo? It, it has Nougat. It, or, yeah. Um, yeah, Oreo, you mean. Um, but no, I don't think any carrier has pushed out. Um, uh, yo, Rick, you've been gone a long, uh, you've come a long way. Thank you. I appreciate that. From being the Android guy. Yeah. Um, anything on the Xperia line? Uh, yeah, we checked out, uh, three of the Xperia phones and, we told them we want to uh, see the phones uh, when they come out, so hopefully we'll get a chance to. Uh, Note 8 or S9? Probably the S9 will be better overall. Um, any CES swag? No, actually. Um, I got like one thing from CES. It's a wireless card charger, and I will be giving that away in our next giveaway. Uh, but yeah, not, nothing too much, man. Nothing, uh, it was not... I mean, people said they would send us stuff, so we'll see how that. I have like literally, I want to say 30 people to email uh, over the next week, so have to do that. But uh, yeah, just a lot going on. Um, did you get to pray with Project Linda and the Razor Phone? Only a little bit. Uh, there was a huge crowd around it, so I got to do very little time with it. That's why we didn't even do a video on it because it would have been noisy. Uh, but yeah, it was it was really cool looking and. Uh, really interesting, but again, it's a concept. Are you going to do a, a video with smart home tech? Uh, I've been doing a lot of smart home tech videos. Actually, we have a playlist of smart home uh, videos. So uh, check all those out. A lot revolve around Google Home and other smart home products. So yeah, uh, we will continue to do smart home stuff uh, as we get more into it. I mean, we did smart locks before. Uh, we, we have uh, this one uh, really cool company uh, called uh, Maximus, I want to say, uh, that had some really cool stuff uh, that the, and uh, they wanted to connect with us on getting some more smart home stuff. So yeah, uh, more and more stuff coming. Uh, should I upgrade to my Moto G5 Plus to the upcoming Moto G6 Plus? The Moto G6 Plus, if that's what it looks like, it looks amazing. The curious thing is with all these leaks, you would assume that they're going to launch it at MWC. So that's really a curiosity. I want to check it out before I tell you. Yes, you should. Fast wireless car charger for the uh, for the SA Plus. Uh, I got one. Uh, the one I gave to my wife is uh, the iAudi one, and they give us a new one to check out. So uh, definitely going to check that out and give it away. Uh, you're doing a great uh, with the channel. Make sure you get some rest, though. Thank you. I appreciate it. Um, all right, guys, I think we're going to call it five minutes early as I still have a lot to do, uh, tonight. Uh, but yeah, a lot of videos coming up, um, this week. I'm going to still try to make sure to get one a day out. So, uh, stay tuned for that. Um, but yeah, we got reviews on the Razer phone finally coming out. I recorded half of it, more than half of it before, uh, CES and the rest, uh, I might scrap the first half and just do the second half, but we'll wait and see. Uh, but yeah, really uh, kind of cool stuff for the Razer phone review, the uh, Samsung laptop review. That'll probably be Friday night or so. Um, and then, uh, yeah, some more stuff coming out, guys. So uh, should be coming out with videos every day. Still a lot to go ahead and see. But overall, I'm just really excited to see uh, all the new things. I'm going to be reaching out to a lot of companies uh, in the next uh, week. So hopefully we'll get a lot of new products shipped out to us and a lot of new things we can check out. All right, guys, make sure to give a like thumbs up before you head out. Thank you as always for watching and staying tuned to the live show. If you do wanna see more of the live shows, make sure to always check us out. Sunday at 8 p.m. Pacific Standard Time is normally when we have Mobile Weekly and we will have it again this Sunday. Thank you guys again always for watching. This has been R-I-C-K-Y, the YouTube Tech Guy.